In the year 1776 a lot of peculiar things happened in the world that laid the foundation for many years ahead and being in direct relation with each other. On May 1st, 1776, Adam Weishaupt founded the Illuminati in Ingolstadt, Bavaria, Germany, where today the Illuminati car Audi, with its Vesica Peitsch's Illuminati symbol in its logo, is being produced. You know, the four rings, see my other video. And only two months later, on July 4th, 1776, the US Declaration of Independence by the same Freemasons became official as the new system of equally pharisocratic Freemasonry replaced the old system of the same pharisocracy where monarchy ruled and the New World Order rule is being set in place through each, each lodge ruling over a certain region, province, state or country. In this case, the Illuminati chosen to exert an important role in the New World, making them no more important than other important lodges as Le Neuf Sœur over France and the Scottish Rite over the UK. It's just hierarchy and all Freemasons will always be brothers no matter which lodge they're in. So the Illuminati are not more or more dangerous than other lodges but only have another territory assigned to. That's all really. So here we're in the small village of Lengnau. Uh, and uh, here it says Lengnau. And in Eng Endingen and Lengnau in 1776 the, uh, the Jews could only live in Switzerland in these two villages. They were kicked out everywhere else and they had to, uh, to wear some special markings like, like in the Second World War. Yeah. And here in this very small village there's even a big synagogue which is quite special. There with this. Yeah. So in the um, later on the 19th century uh, there were no more Jews in the whole of Switzerland. You know, what well, Switzerland is from the Templars, you know. So 1776 is quite a special date because this is the uh, it also has to do with the American independence and uh, the revolution and it is the uh, uh, the Illuminati were founded by Adam Weishaupt in the, in the south of Germany in um, in Ingolstadt, the Illuminati. So it's all the same date, a lot of things happened. So all the Jews in Switzerland, they could only live in these two towns. They were like a, like a ghetto, if you want. So here you can read in English, and here in German. In German, English, French force. So the first Jew who was here was in 1622, it says. Oh. Amazing, in a little village like this. Yeah. Then, at the Templars base Octagon, that gives all the orders to the worldwide web of Freemason rule of the aristocracy, it had always been a rule that Switzerland, the motherland, should always safeguard the more concentrated form and spirit of the pharaohs and the sisters of Isis. And therefore, as a direct result of the other Templar Freemason 1776 happenings, that all Jews in the very base of Octagon were to be confined to the two northern towns in Switzerland of Lengnau and Endingen, only in order to keep the most important base clean and under total pharaonic domination, not even allowing another philosophy, tradition, way of thinking or behaving, the way things have always been in the land of Pharaoh. And just as Switzerland has always been, where being different is a reason for persecution and terror. And today in the racist country of Switzerland, the same things are going on today, only in a more far more hidden way.
but they kill, they execute, they terrorize, they mock people. Uh, yeah, well, I know, I understand what it's what it should be like to be persecuted as a Jew or a Negro. I've been both for 16 years here in Switzerland. And yes, they terrorized the Jews by threatening them with being burned at the stakes as it was practiced in Switzerland until 1782 and almost within the 19th century. So imprisoned in these ghettos, all Jews had to wear a yellow hat called the Rota and the yellow circle on their breasts. And as these villages were chosen on purpose right on the German border, only 10 kilometers away, all Jews were finally driven out of Switzerland were not murdered before. At the beginning, so at the beginning of the 19th century, Switzerland was again Judenrein, as the Swiss say, cleansed of Jews, and all of them had left, uh, many making it for the uh, Americas. So here you can see this uh, typical circle, and here's the typical hat, here's again this circle here. And in fact, this was also the part, the part of the plan to chase people out of Europe for religious persecution, as the New World Order needed immigrants, settlers and labour to build up the New World and next plan of the fair aristocracy. And in fact, today we can see the very same things happening in Octagon, Switzerland, as immigrants are being chased out of Switzerland by means of organised Swiss terror, and Swiss Nazi politics and corrupt liar authorities, all for the same reason that the main pharaonic base in the world accepts only one predominantly set of mind, accepting only obedience to the hidden forces within Octogon, Switzerland. Oh, it's interesting, Fleur de Lys, symbol of the aristocracy, the fair aristocracy, here in Endingen. So this is one of the two villages, Endingen and Lengnau. So here is the Jewish cemetery with a lot of obelisks. And uh, it's in between the two villages where the Jews in 1776 were banned too. Here you can read in English. This is the oldest Jewish cemetery in, in Switzerland. Well, there are no more Jews apparently here. They all went back to Zurich in these two villages. So here you can see, before we were at this village and now we're going, there's the cemetery and there's the other village, real next to each other. So I, I think that the, the date of 1776 17, 17, uh, is, uh, is quite interesting. So, well, let's have a look. Let's get in. So here's the cemetery. It's a nice cemetery, very special. I can see the first obelisk there. There it is, pharaohs. Therefore, Swiss politics needs criminals and no other country will interfere. Except maybe some rogue US agencies, maybe. I hope so. Look, this sort of filth is coming into the uh, into the mailbox here. It's all over in the streets, everywhere. All Nazi propaganda. Um, these are today's Jews. Oh, you know, the racist persecution. I'm one of them here. You know, yeah, an unwanted criminal. These are the th same things they did with the Jews and. Um, uh, they say, well, they're all criminals and they're dangerous, they kill children, all these things. It's the same thing going on today. You know, I'm not Jewish. I'm a South African. I'm a white South African. And I'm fed up with it. I open up my mouth. And um, they're really begging for it. You know what I mean? They're begging for it. And... Um, yeah, so I know it's the same thing they did in history. They, they say, well, all my life I've, I've been, um, I've, 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 
I always avoided criminals and crime and here they just turn me into a criminal. The same thing they did in the Middle Ages with the Jews. I fully understand this. I fully understand what happened. I had to experience this here for 16 years. And the Swiss always clean, of course. Well, they're the biggest criminals you can imagine. Now, the biggest crime against humanity. Now, this thing goes real deep. So this, this is the same thing as the, the yellow star and the yellow hat, the rota that the Jews had to wear. You know, well, I'm, I'm, I've been wearing one here since 16 years. See what I mean? You know, so I understand history. I understand the Second World War. You know, I've been living through, through three world wars like here. And I haven't hit back yet. Well, there's a lot of barbed wire actually. Oh, why, why the barbed wire? Full of it. Why? It's a bit dodgy. So here we can see that Switzerland already practiced yellow Nazi markings for Jews in, in 1776. And if there would have been Negroes, Asians, other immigrants and races at that time, they too would have been forced these yellow Swiss markings for non-Swiss. And in fact, the Swiss already executed this practice in the Middle Ages, which started in and around the founding of Octagon by the Templars on August 1st, 1291, right after the Crusades. An obelisk, pharaohs, the joining, Freemasons. Bloch. Oh, a little castle. Why do you need a castle in your grave? Oh. It is a beautiful cemetery, I think. Oh, I've never seen a nice cemetery like this, I must admit. Not that I would spend my holiday here. Yeah? Obelisks, pharaohs. So here are a lot of obelisks, but not all of them. So I don't think all of them are pharaohs. Just the ones who put an obelisk. Only a pharaoh can put an obelisk on his grave. Yeah. I mean, the pharaohs rule everywhere, also over the Hebrew people, just as they rule over Germany, the US, and here in Switzerland is probably the highest, most of them here, the highest concentration of pharaohs. There are not as many as in Luzern and in Bern. So this practice of yellow markings on Jews is not a German idea at all, but it is Nazi Templar stuff from Octagon, Switzerland, that existed already in the Middle Ages, long before Mr. Hitler and his Swiss financing Nazis. And the Swiss are doing it again today, stigmatizing foreigners and immigrants, as we can see in the streets here and in newspapers on t television. They're working towards something again and the whole world is looking at it and nobody is doing a thing. Well, I open up my mouth, you understand? And no Swiss is going to stop me from opening my mouth. They can even come again with their justice department and their Nazi police from stopping me making my films. But I open up my mouth. 
You hear me, Swissies? These are the sort of things the Swiss Nazis are working towards again. With their stigmatizing of immigrants and they have an enormous impact on other Nazis now in Russia and in Germany and in France using the same um, uh, Swiss People's Party um, caric caricatures. So uh, the Swiss are walk working towards this which was in fact the Swiss idea of the Nazi Templars in the first place. People wake up and stop them. So this is more like Pharaonic here. And this one here, well it's freshly dug out. Let's see if I sink away on it. Oh, fresh. I sink away for an inch here. I can almost feel a hand grabbing my foot. The other gravestones are, are nice looking, except the obelisks. It says here rests Guggenheim, the kings, it says kings, Königen von Endingen. That's one of the villages here. The kings of Endingen, Endingen, yeah. That's, well, that's why we just saw the Fleur de Lys, eh? Pharaohs with an obelisk. These are pharaohs. Yeah. The kings of Endingen. And the custom is even older than that, and not even European. In the year 717, the Caliph of Baghdad ordered the Jews to wear a, and the Christians to wear a yellow belt and a yellow rota hat in a specific conic form. In 850, the Caliph al Mutawakil, and in 807, the Caliph Harun al Rashid, and all the others followed. So here you can read this. So this is not German at all, folks. It isn't. The Germans were in a dictatorship by the Nazi Templars from Octagon, Switzerland. They didn't have any, any other possibility than follow it. Well, many of them did, but most of them didn't even want this. It was a, a, a dictatorship for the Europeans by the pharaohs and the fair aristocracy. Um, so this is where it comes from, really. Yeah, it's also in Wikipedia and here in Muslim countries that it came out of the Muslim world. There's a lot of information about it actually. Uh, you can find it out yourself. Right, here's some more. And this is what these hats look like. It looks like a UFO with an antenna. Beep beep. Now, why always the color yellow? Because yellow is haram and forbidden for a Muslim man and supposed to be a feminine homosexual color. While the color pink is okay for Muslim men. There is a hadith or interdiction number 5173 till 5178 in the book 24 of the hadith saying that yellow is the color of the kafar or disbelievers. This is why in the Muslim world, Jews and Christians were stigmatized and discriminated to wear these yellow garments and markings. So the yellow markings of the Jews in the Middle Ages were not a European idea. And the yellow star of David during the Nazi terror was not a German idea. The whole concept was from Islam by the Muslims and imported by the Swiss Nazi Templars during the Crusades, who also betrayed the European, German, French and English Crusaders to Saladin, when they had the Templars' treasure safely brought into Switzerland. So this thing is going very deep, folks. So you can read the whole Hadid. Uh, how do you like my Muslim pronunciation? Hadid.
Right, so. And these Pharisocratic Templars got in fact along very well with the Nizari Ismaili or Nizaria sect, better known under the name of the Hashashin, where our word assassin comes from. They were founded in, in 1080 by Hassani Sabah, about the same time as the Templars. For the same specific reason, an enemy within, sort of special forces, being more a bunch of pharaonic backstabbers than true fighters, very similar to the SS and the Nazis. And also here the Nazi Islam connection gets real where the Palestinian leader Mufti Husseini was the head of an entire German SS division of 26,000 men of entirely Muslims killing Europeans and Jews for Hitler. This was SS division Hanjar which is the name for a bent rounded Muslim round sword just as the Shriners have. While the Templar Nazis told the Germans what they wanted to hear and you had to be blonde, blue eyes, blue eyed and Nordic and they told the guys in the SS Muslim division the exact opposite. So this is all in Wikipedia, you can find it yourself. Yeah. It's all over. Mr. Hitler, in fact, talked a lot about Islam, and um, here are some of the uh, of the things he said. He said uh, there are loads of things actually. He said the Muslim religion too would have been much more compatible to us than Christianity. Why did it have to be Christianity with its meekness and flabbiness? And um, during a meeting at the Wehr Werwolf. On the afternoon of uh, August 27, 1942, he said uh, that Christianity is something well of insipid. We would have better received Islam, those doct doctrines of the reward, reward of heroism, combatants, combatants on, alone have the seventh heaven. With that, the Germans would have conquered the world. It's only by Christianity that we have been held distant. There are many people who believe that Mr. Hitler was in fact a Muslim. Well, I explain you this. For Templars and for Freemasons, as Mr. Hitler was, it's the same thing. As in every Freemason temple, uh, temple or lodge, you can find a Bible, a Koran and a Torah. For them, it's all the same. So the fact that Hitler is talking about Islam, it, uh, it's another proof that in fact he, is a free ma he was a Freemason. And again, only a Freemason and a Templar, a Nazi Templar from Octagon, Switzerland could say a thing like this. Because for them it's all the same. It's for the Pharaohs, it doesn't matter to what religion you belong. But you can see that he uh, despised of the Germans. You can see this, really. And, well, that's what he did. He destroyed Germany. He was the enemy within, with his obelisks and, and Freemason and handshakes he was doing. The enemy within. He wanted to destroy Europe and, uh, well, get the Muslims here. And, and again, this is not the fault of the Muslims themselves. They are misled, just as anybody else. We are all misled by them, by the pharaohs, by the pharaohistocracy and the Templar Nazis. We are all misled, all peoples, all religions and all races. And here is Mr. Hitler in Zurich, 
where he got financed by the Swiss. And all these Swiss sort of so-called commissions for the truth, they all end up like that Switzerland is so neutral and so innocent and they never done anything. Right? So here we can see uh, Mr. Hitler together with the Palestinian during the Second World War, before the Second World War. And this Palestinian, his name is Mufti Amin Al-Husseini. He was the biggest hero of, uh, of Yasser Arafat. So long, long, long before the State of Israel, the Palestinians already wanted to murder all the Jews. There are many pictures of Mr. Al-Husseini, actually. So here again is the, uh, the Islam. Nazi connection. And again, it's only the uh, the Pharaonic leaders. Yeah, two Pharaonic leaders. So people wake up. Muslims wake up, Jews wake up, uh, Christians, white people, Asians, Negroes, everybody wake up. Because we're all brothers and sisters. We have to get rid of the enemy within. Is that clear to you? We're probably the oldest ones here. Special. I've never seen a cemetery like that. Very special. And this is how sly the Templar Nazis from Octagon, Switzerland really are. Palestinian Mufti Husseini of the Islamic SS division was the greatest hero of Yasser Arafat, who was another Palestinian whom the Swiss from Octagon declared poisoned by polonium on November the 6th, 2013, only a few days ago. Again, these Swiss Templar Nazis who know perfectly well that this announcement will stir up the Middle East again and will bring fire, death and destruction to the, to the entire region. This is the way the Swiss from Octagon work, so their banks can make a lot of money again. We all know that the Swiss are not very honest at all, don't care about justice at all, and are very racist. So it can be assumed that their announcement is everything else than human compassion and a sense for justice. Their aim is to stir up the region and bring profit to their criminal Swiss banks. This so-called legal medicine of Lausanne University in Switzerland knows very well that immigrants die all over in Swiss torture detention centers. But instead of analyzing that, they prefer bringing deliberate hatred into the Middle East. This is so typical for Switzerland and their so-called neutrality swindle while collaborating with the biggest crimes against humanity that, had, that, that have ever been perpetrated against mankind. So oh, yeah, you can read the old article. Again, made in Switzerland. They export crime and war and racism. That's what they do. Just as on February 2nd, 1939, the Swiss enforced all Jews in Switzerland to have a stamp with the letter J on it. And they forced all Jewish men the name Israel and for all women the name Sarah in front of their entire name on their identity cards and passports. Another Swiss Templars idea the German Nazis welcomed and copied. So here we can read it about the J stamp of the Swiss authorities. It was a Swiss invention. You know by this Heinrich Rotmund, that was the guy who gave all the the Red Cross passes in Bern. I already made that film about that. Uh, to on, uh, he gave that to um, real war criminals. So you can read the whole article. It says the criminals were Swiss. It's another guy who who got terrorized by the Swiss and uh, because he he wrote these things he he, he digged uh, he was digging in it in the Swiss history and this is not uh, 
It gets revenged, these sort of things, by the Swiss. <laughs> yeah, the tree has grown over it. Like in Angkor in, what is it, Cambodia? Cambodia. <laughs> Special. Eaten by a, bar, by a tree. Then people had to wear a yellow star on the breast and today entire blocks in European cities show the same yellow haram collar where European disbelievers are not even allowed access anymore. But of course it's not the ordinary Muslim who's doing this. It's only the followers of the same pharaohs as in the West who, who also rule in Islam by divide and rule, setting people and fractions up against each other. I met in my life some fine Muslims who helped me, fed me and gave me shelter. So now we understand why the color yellow. It's, it's probably some pharaonic thing somewhere. I should analyze this. And also in the Muslim world these pharaohs rule like the king of Saudi Arabia who collaborated with Hitler, the Nazis. Roosevelt and the British aristocracy all together. These muftis of the SS, all these Arab dictators and caliphs who forced others to wear yellow markings, just as these pharaohs rule in the Western world and the entire planet. We the people, no matter your color, race or religion, should unite against the real enemy of mankind together and wake up to the fact that the fair aristocracy and the Nazi Templars of Octagon are very real. These pharaohs in the Alps wants, want to bring war into the world because the end of their banks is near. So they will steer up the Middle East first, as they're trying now. The beast of the Alps has been detected and therefore gets real unpredictable now. These are the Nazi Templars of Octagon, the Beast of the Alps. <laughs>